Greetings from Black Cherry Puppet Theater. We're going to show you how to make your own mini shadow puppet show using some simple materials you can probably find around your home. You will need a pair of scissors, a glue stick, some light colored pencils or a regular pencil will do, a marker, some masking tape, a hole puncher if you have one, some black construction paper. If you don't have any, you can check your recycle bin for some other thick, dark paper. An empty cereal box, the bigger the better. A piece of tissue paper, like you'd find in a present. Or a very thin sheet of printer paper will do if you can't find tissue paper. The last thing that you'll need is a light source. This could be any sort of battery-powered lantern, or a plug-in desk lamp, a flashlight, or even the flashlight on a cell phone, or a book light. Use whatever you can find. Just make sure to ask an adult first. Before we start, let's talk about shadow. A shadow is a dark area or shape made when something comes between rays of light and a surface. In this case, my hand is that something coming between the flashlight and the wall behind it, making a shadow. I can move my hand around and give it a bit of a character in order to turn that shadow into a shadow puppet. The shadow puppets we'll be making today will be made using cut paper and strips of thin cardboard. You can play with them just like this with a light projected on a wall, but we're going to be making a special miniature little shadow puppet stage for them to perform on. And here's a peek at what that stage will look like with a thin screen to allow light and shadow to be projected on the other side. In a darkened room with a light source on behind your screen, your shadow puppets will start to come alive. Now let's get started making that shadow puppet stage. First, take your cereal box and open both sides. The top is probably already open, so you'll need to get your fingers in there and open up the bottom. Next, you're going to make just one cut along the long edge of your cereal box, right along one of the folded edges. Watch your fingers and make sure to ask an adult if you need help. Now you have one big piece. The large flat panel that's connected to the skinny little flap is the one that you want to use to draw your puppet screen on. You're going to use a marker to draw out a rectangular shape. You can use any straight edge, a piece of paper, or a ruler to draw your rectangle. Just make sure that you leave about an inch of space around the edge of your cardboard frame. So now I have a rectangle with some space around the edges. Now it's time to cut that rectangle out. So you can cut a small diagonal line from one corner to the corner of your drawn rectangle and then trace that line with your scissors to cut it out. And be sure to save that rectangle as we're gonna need it when we get to our puppet step. Now I'll need my masking tape. I'll probably need about 10 little pieces. You can rip them off ahead of time and stick them on the edge of your table or someplace you know they'll come off of. Now we'll tape that first cut we made back together right on that little diagonal line. Flip it over and put another piece of tape on the other side, right on that diagonal cut. Once that's together, if you haven't already, now's a good time to put a scrap piece of paper under your work and you're going to glue all around that window frame edge on the shiny, colorful side of your box. And if you're using your printer paper, you would stick that on. I'm using tissue paper that lets the light through a little bit better and I'm going to lay that flat and smooth it out as best I can, trying not to get too many wrinkles. And whatever extra paper you have hanging off the edge, you can trim off. It can be rough. No one will see this part. Now we'll start to reassemble the box with the brown side on the outside and the colorful side on the inside. So you'll fold those flaps in and down to reconnect them. This part can be really tricky, so ask an adult if you need help. Use your tape to secure them back together. One piece on the outside,
and another piece of tape on the inside where the two flaps meet. This will help make sure it will stay together. Repeat the same thing on the bottom. You can give it a little extra crease if it needs it. Tape the outside. And again on the inside where those flaps meet up. You might need to bend that last edge to make your puppet stage stand up straight on your table and you're all set. This is the side where you'll be moving your puppets around and this is the side where the audience will see your shadows. Let's get started making those puppets. We'll start by taking a piece of black construction paper or whatever thick paper you have and folding it in half. Fold it in half again and then cut along those folds to give us some smaller pieces to work with. Now you can hold one of those pieces up to the screen and make sure that it fits. You don't want to make your puppets bigger than your puppet screen. I'm going to fold my piece in half once again and cut it out to make an even smaller puppet so it has some space to move around the screen. Now I just have to brainstorm what kind of puppet show I want to make. I've decided on an underwater theme, so I'm going to start with something simple, like a fish. I can start with a round or oval shape for the body, and a triangle for the tail. I don't need to worry about drawing details on the inside of my puppet, because we'll only be seeing the shadow. The most important part is just the outline of the outside edge. I'm just going to draw one more triangle shape for the fish mouth that I'll be cutting out. Now I can cut along the outside edge of my puppet, following the lines that I've drawn. Don't forget the mouth. Cute! If you have a hole punch, you could use that to punch a small eye hole out. Now that you've got the basics, you could make whatever kind of puppets you like, or you can follow along with me as I make a few more sea creatures. This one's a jellyfish with a rounded top for its head and a straight line across the bottom. Now I'll give it some tentacles. They can be straight or wavy or a little of both. And just like with the fish, we're going to want to cut along the outline of the outside edge of your drawing. And you can always ask for help if you need it. You can mark out two spots if you'd like to give it eyes. And if you have a hole punch, punch them out. If you don't have a hole punch, you could use a sharpened pencil to gently poke through those marks. Give it a little wiggle and just be careful not to poke yourself or you could just leave it without eyes. Next, I'm going to prepare another small piece of paper to make a shark puppet. I'll start by drawing a long almond shape, kind of like a long oval with pointy sides, and give it a funky little tail, a sharp triangle fin on top, and then some jagged shark teeth. And just like the others, cut it out along the edge. I can give it an eye and either hole punch or poke it out. Alright, I'm going to try one more quick one before I add on the sticks and try them out on stage. This is a little starfish, so sort of like a star or flower shape with two little eyes. Cut it out and then either punch or gently poke out the eyes or I can just leave it solid.
Now I'm going to grab that rectangle shape I cut out from the cereal box and cut some strips on the short side, a little bit wider than my pencil. I'll take one of those strips and bend a small tab on one side and you're going to put glue on it on the brown side and stick it on your puppet in the center. You might have to squeeze it a little or bend it to make it stick in place. And then set it aside for a moment to dry. And repeat with the other puppets that you have made so far. If there are eyes on your puppet, try not to cover them up with your cardboard strip. And when that's done, we can try them out on our puppet screen. At the back of your puppet screen, you want to set up your light source and you want to have it as close to the screen as you can and off to the side so your hands have room to move. If you're using something like a flashlight that might roll away, you might need to set up a little something to keep it in place. I used a roll of masking tape, but you can use whatever you have. If you're using a cell phone flashlight or something that needs to sit up, you could try putting it in a cup or a mug. And same idea with the desk lamp. Try placing it off to the side and close to the screen if you can. This will allow your hands to not get in the way. You might have to try it out a few different ways to get it right. So don't worry if it doesn't work the first time. In order for your puppet to be seen clearly, you'll need to hold it flat up against the tissue paper or white copy paper so that your puppet is touching the screen. You can practice moving it on and off screen, moving it around slow or fast, or even giving it a little spin. You'll also want to turn off the lights in the room or dim them if you can so that your puppets can be seen more clearly. And if something doesn't look right or needs adjusting, you can always make an extra cut or two or remake it. If you want, you could even add a few pieces of scenery to the back of your puppet screen. I'm making a couple plants and a rock to go with my underwater theme. Just cut them out and tape them on the back of your puppet screen near the edge so they don't get in the way. And now I can test out my puppets in their new environment. Now that you know what your puppets will look like on the screen, if you're inspired, you could make even more. On a larger sheet of paper, I'm gonna try out a giant squid. It's a little more complex, but in the same way, you'll cut it out, add eye holes if you'd like, You could even experiment with trying to do a mouth. If you fold your puppet in half gently and cut out a teeny little triangle, you'll get a mouth shape. Just make sure you flatten it out afterwards. If you're doing the underwater theme too, you could try a whale or an octopus or an eel or lots of different kinds of fish. When you're ready to perform your shadow puppet show, you want to line your puppets up behind the screen, get your light in place, whether it's a lamp, a flashlight, or whatever, turn it on and dim the lights, and you're ready. Just make sure that you hold your puppets flat against the screen. And have fun! You could put some music on to move your puppets to, or you could tell a story to whoever's watching. You could give your characters a voice and speak for them, or you could just make some sounds. Where, oh where, did all those delicious fishes go? I'm so hungry. Phew, that was close. He didn't see me because I'm a master of disguise. I can blend into my surroundings. Bloop, 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 bloop. Ooh, ooh. 
Anyone want to hear a joke? Sure. What did the shark say after eating a clownfish? What did he say? That tasted a little bit funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bad. We hope you had fun making your own mini shadow puppet show with us at Black Cherry Puppet Theater in Baltimore, Maryland. If you'd like to watch our other make your own puppet videos or learn more about what we do, you can visit blackcherry.org.